Ask Reddit by nature and grace. What is an opinion you have turned 180 degrees on? Giving people life advice unprompted. Realized that folks are too complicated to think I'd give any useful advice while knowing comparatively little about them. Plus, half the time it was advice I needed to follow, not for them to listen. I've had to break this habit as well. Also being on the receiving end of unsolicited advice a lot over the last few years really shifted my perspective. On the outside maybe it looks like someone needs a specific piece of advice but often the deeper you dig into their situation you find that it's almost always useless information for them. Social media. I came of professional age right alongside Facebook and thought it was going to be this great thing that brought people together. I was wrong about that. It did. For a while. If it was really that bad. She would just leave. Then I was in an abusive relationship and realized that it's never that easy. I saw a TED talk where the speaker summarized her experience brilliantly. I wasn't in an abusive relationship. I was in a complicated relationship with a man who only I understood. Edit. Thanks at Malbec14 for adding the link below. If I eat this, insert any rubbish food, I'll be fine. My body doesn't care. 30 years on, and yes, yes indeed. The body did care. It tells me every day how much it cared. Cheese now gives me heartburn and I'm still grieving. Well traveled people are open minded. I've met people who've traveled a lot but are still very judgmental. Edit, grammar. I've traveled a good amount. And some of the well-traveled folks I've come across are seriously fucking annoying. It's kinda funny, because there are two very opposite sides of the spectrum. Some people who are so close-minded that they can't fathom why another society would do things differently. Some people who are so open-minded that their brains have fallen out. I used to believe I was always right. Now I am nearly certain I am wrong most of the time. You're wrong about that. That history was boring. But I think it was mostly the teacher's fault. Used to hate history when the emphasis was on memorizing dates and names. So boring. But then I took a course where the book like pitted each conflict as a two side story and showed both viewpoints. And the tests were all writing about who you agreed with. And it was so much more fascinating. Mr. Hill. My 8th grade history teacher. Greatest guy ever. Dressed up as a beekeeper, a revolutionary soldier, a gold miner, etc. had the greatest authentic costumes. When we showed up for class and Mr. Hill had a costume on, we wanted to learn about whatever he was about to teach us. Taught us how to start a fire with flint and amp, steel. Always super nice, too. That junk is a human garbage. It wasn't until I was in the hospital for an appendectomy that went sideways. They had to slit me open stem to stern. I couldn't use the button for morphine so they were pushing IV Demerol through a pick line. Best. Thing. Ever. I had to tell the nurse to start weaning me as I was enjoying it way too much and I could almost see the future. From that point on I totally understood how people get hooked. I had an unrelenting cough years ago. Went to urgent care. They prescribed Oxycontin, 16 pills. The first pill made my bad back painless for the first time in decades. Cough went away but then I kept taking them until the pills ran out. At that point, I thought of asking my doctor for a refill. It was then I knew it was time to stop. It's easy to get addicted. The importance of the Oxford comma. I used to be against it because and takes the place of the comma. How young and foolish I was. I love, respect, and admire your choice. That sex education shouldn't be taught to children too young. Then I read a story about a girl who read about sex education in a book and told her mum daddy does this to me. Turns out daddy has been sexually abusing her for ages. First of all. Good on you for being willing to change an opinion. Secondly, 
to anyone who may be feeling contrarian and just reading and not commenting a fake it has been proven that when children learn the proper names for body parts and age appropriate sex education, they are more likely to report when they are being abused. I will scream from the rooftops forever that sex education is vital. I used to think hoas were fine and served a purpose. Having lived in a condo for 6 years and being the treasurer of our hoa for 4 years because no one else was willing to do it, I will never live in a place with an hoa again. It's basically a few people doing all the work for free and the rest are complaining assholes who don't understand that there are rules so you can all live in peace under one roof. We sold our condo today. Merry Christmas indeed. Never again. Fuck hoas. Used to believe that drunks and drug users were losers. Thanks, dare. Now I'm much older, have seen the evils of this world, have realized I don't even know 1% of how hard life can be for some people, and completely understand why people would do anything to kill that pain. Addiction is a slow burn suicide. Having a roommate. There are far more bad roommates than decent ones. It's not worth the headache. I'd rather work my ass off at work with a bunch of assholes than have to come home and deal with any other asshole than my own. I used to think sometimes people had differences but between living with a drunk, then a drug dealer, then a passive aggressive neat freak who weaponized property management I honestly think bad roommates are far too many in number. Used to never say no, now I say no to so many things and have never felt better. Life is too short to do things that you don't want to do. Eating disorders. First I thought they were stupid because how do you think a fat when a skinny lol wtf and then I saw ed communities and it evolved into thinking it's stupid and all these people are assholes and then I got my own issues with food and it all kinda clicked everything makes sense not only is there actually a lot of nice ppl in there. But also the people who are assholes are literally in a permanent state of hanger stress and self-hate not only from society but ed communities have a hierarchy too. So it's like a double loss of course fear mean no excuse for what they may do. But it just makes sense that most of the mean things you may see them say do ice and personal. It's projection and sadness now I just feel bad and hope they can all heal. Also, some ED might not be based on what someone looks or think they look like either. They might develop one completely separately from that. The death penalty. I believed in it because there are people who are really horrible and deserve to die. I still believe that. The thing is I definitely do not trust our government or our justice system with the power to kill people. After personally dealing with both the courts and law enforcement in person what I have experienced is indifference, incompetence, and rampant corruption. And that's just from my personal experiences. On top of that from what I have seen happen to other people and on the news is there's also very obvious extensive sexism, racism, and just about every other kind of discrimination you can think of. I was raised in a Christian household, and I used to have a real problem with gay marriage. Until my gay friend got married. Seeing how happy she was after she and her wife were married was a real eye opener for me. Because I know lots of hetero couples who aren't nearly as happy. Recently, another gay friend of mine also married her partner, and I couldn't be happier for them. That's what I think it boils down to honestly. Exposure, plain and simple. Well, maybe not as cut and dry, but when people see people for people, another human being instead of an arbitrary concept, most people have a change of heart. I used to be afraid of flying. Now working on my pilot's license. I used to hold the suicide as selfish stance back when I was a teen slash 20 something, even after having completed a psych degree. I understand now that self harm and suicide are symptoms of greater illness. I no longer view it as a choice in most circumstances. I can only feel sorry for suicidal people. They don't want to die or make other people upset, they just want to get rid of the pain. Pretty much all of my opinions aside from my political ones. My god, I see my old Facebook posts and wins. I was so judgmental. Ironically, a lot of things I judge people for struggling with, I'm now struggling with. 
but I've also grown. I understand deep-rooted issues like abusive partners, poverty, systemic racism, etc. I now only judge people who wear socks with sandals and even that is wavering as I've discovered how comfortable it can be. Similar but about fanny packs. That being feminine and or caring about your looks meant you were a bad, selfish and shallow person. I don't wear makeup every day but I have long nails I take care of myself and I like picking outfits, seeing what colors and styles go together and how different things look on me. I recently tried a totally new hairstyle as well. I love experimenting with clothes looks and that's okay, doesn't change who I am inside. I was pro soda, and I would drink disgusting amounts. Thank the genetic lottery diabetes doesn't run in my family. Now, water all the way. The real adult drink. Same. I've been clean from soda and most processed sugars now for a few years, and the one sip of coke I took around Thanksgiving was harsh to my taste buds. It's insane when you realize just how much our bodies adapt to sugar. I used to be very pro death penalty. I listen to a lot of crime podcasts and watch so many documentaries, I know the kind of horrible shit people can do. But there was an episode of a podcast I listened to where they discussed both sides of the death penalty debate and I remember hearing this person make their point and in an instant I knew my stance had been changed. I don't remember the exact phrase but really what it came down to was, the death penalty debate isn't about whether or not there are crimes people should die for, but rather whether or not the government should be given the power to decide whether or not people live or die. So yeah. I do think there are crimes people deserve to die for, heinous unforgivable things, but I believe the government should not have the right to decide whether or not people live or die. Who's to say they won't one day find a way to abuse that power for their own benefit? If we prevent building more housing, my neighborhood will keep its character and charm. Nope, instead it will price out my friends become a haven for the well-to-do, and see an influx of homelessness I was a left NIMBY and now I am a left YIMBY. I grew up in a historic reserve town where you almost can't build anything new, and I feel this. In that town's case I think it's worth it given the history but in general it's made me appreciate responsible development. Mental health is fake and a bunch of people that just need to put on their big girl panties. And then I had a breakdown back in 2013. I was wrong. When it's all in your head goes from a dismissive platitude to a shocking reality when it's all in your head. 